Dudes, what's happening? This is Trent, and I've been recently I've been playing uh, Metal Gear Solid on the PlayStation 1 PSX right here on my channel. If you haven't seen it yet, it's it's different than other just playthroughs because one, I'm a huge Metal Gear fan, and two, I'm breaking it down, man. I wanted to show you guys how some of this stuff is made. And uh, I've, I've talked a little bit about uh, Alpha Channels, and I've talked a little bit about how they were very efficient about not using geometry to create a sense of a lot of cutaways and depth uh, without really using geometry. And I wanted to show you how you can do that. How is this, I want to deconstruct how are alpha channels created and exported? How could you create a, a Metal Gear Solid 1 using Sketchbook Pro and Unity Engine? And then at the end, I'm going to show you how I've mapped that uh, texture onto uh, geometry. And then I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna actually walk around it and I'm gonna show you what it looks like uh, and, and a, a very direct, clear example of alpha channels, alpha textures uh, being used in Unity Engine. And all this stuff is available to you. I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step of it. Basically, what I do is I just start out with um, uh, painting on a new layer in Sketchbook Pro. And there's a, a, a background layer in, uh, behind everything you'll notice at the bottom of the layer stack. And what you wanna do is, I mean, you can turn that off entirely and then you've immediately already got yourself an alpha channel. Anything that's visible is gonna be visible on your texture. If it's on that kind of checkerboard uh, dot pattern that's, that's on the background layer, that's invisible right now, that's gonna be invisible when you map it onto some geometry. This is also really useful if you're making a t-shirt design or if you're using, if you're making like a sticker cutouts or if you really wanna do something that's got some transparency to it on any other kind of print material or anything like that. I guess it won't work on paper. It'll show the color of the paper on anything that's in the transparent area. But alpha channels are really not that tricky with Sketchbook Pro because if there's paint there, it's going to get seen. It's going to be visible. You know, it's it, it gets a little trickier when you start to fade alphas. And uh, I believe Sketchbook Pro will allow you to kind of have some soft edges on things as well. You want to be careful with that because if you get like half opacity on things, it can be uh, very messy if you're doing indie games or something like that. And usually you want a nice, clean, crisp edge on things, usually most of the time. And I'm not going to go too much into, like, I'm not going to take this texture to a professionally level, a professionally textured level. Uh, in fact, there's going to be a little bit of line art in it. Maybe it's just a little bit of stylization. I don't know. Uh, this is really just for completely for demo purposes. I did this for you guys. Um, also, I did it because I've freaking love Metal Gear. I found this handy texture sheet that's basically some uh, ripped textures from the actual game from the PlayStation 1. I think somebody went in and actually pulled out a bunch of these textures. If you're watching my playthrough, you'll recognize some of those. I can see like the cardboard boxes that are stacked under the desk in uh, the room where you pick up the... Um, the silencer, or no, that's the room where you pick up the night vision goggles. And uh, you can definitely recognize that floor texture. You see it just everywhere. There's some awesome crates that you see laying around and uh, just, oh, there's the computer desk too that I kind of pointed out where they actually, they didn't use geometry uh, to actually have a keyboard. They just painted it into the texture because they didn't have a lot of geometry to build these rooms. And I was saying that like one guy could probably texture the entire room uh, in, in one weekend. And that's, that's pretty accurate from what I'm finding. I mean, I'm using, you know, full, full size texture sizes here. You, usually most of that stuff was only 256 by 256. And so you would see the pixelation. Uh, what you just saw was kind of an example of where I had erased out. I switched my background layer to black so that I could just make sure that I don't have any noise or any weird uh, artifacts or anything like that in the graphic. And uh, now I'm just kind of going in and, and adding in a little bit of extra kind of detail to kind of create a fake lighting. The texture is going to have lighting on it and I'm going to place a few point lights in the scene. I'm not going to get too atmospheric with it or anything like that, just enough to show you what I'm talking about and how this thing can be used. But it's coming together nicely. I don't know how this would be actually structured, how I would use it. It's a uh, like, I don't know that it makes sense. I just wanted to show you an example of like something that had some iron bars and some cutaway areas so that we can really get a good example of how it's flat, 
but it kind of has a little bit of a painted texture depth. And then I'm going in uh, with a little bit of a noisy kind of texture brushes. Sketchbook Pro has some, a lot of really cool options for getting a lot of noise and uh, just painted kind of uh, brushes in there. So the next step's really important. What you wanna do, I cut away everything else. By that I mean I drew a marquee around the actual texture and then I used the crop option. And uh, what you wanna do is you wanna save out as a TIFF, uh, TIFF file, T-I-F-F. Hop, skip, and jump on over to Unity 3D. Now, this is assuming you have some familiarity with this. I created a, a plane and I just went ahead and dropped my texture in on, a, uh, on that, that plane. And then I've set the shader on the texture of the object to a legacy shader for transparency, diffuse. Pop in a first person controller and bing bang at a boom. You're in Shadow Moses Island, Colonel. What's a Russian gunship doing here? Ba -ba -da -da. <laughs> so this was a lot of fun. I would say that this, this uh, texture took about an hour along with the video editing and whatnot. Um, Unity, is, uh, Unity is kind of a new thing for me. I'm digging in, I'm doing a little bit more with 3D modeling and uh, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of that stuff coming up in some future videos. I don't think I'll take the, uh, the Metal Gear stuff too far. Uh, it's just kind of neat to kind of tear it apart, break it down, see what's under the hood and show you guys what I know. Uh, and hopefully that might help you guys along in your journey if you start to get into indie game development or if you are just curious about how it all comes together, how it all works from a developer's perspective. If you have any questions, you know, I'd certainly, I'm, I'm loving doing this stuff. I want to break it down. I'm kind of working on some indie game projects myself. So a lot of this is really me kind of figuring it out, dissecting it all, figuring it all out and putting it all together into my own indie projects. If you have questions that you'd like me to answer or try to figure out, you know, drop those in the comments in the section below the video. If you want to use my painting techniques and learn uh, how I do all of the things that I do with uh, both uh, Photoshop and Sketchbook Pro, you can swing on over to Gumroad and pick up my box set of tutorials. All right, dudes, till next time, a ciao.